All right, let's get started with 1.5a. This will be the first of two videos for section 1.5. And in the first video, we're going to tackle radical equations, and we're going to tackle equations quadratic in their form. So let's take a look at our first objective, which is to solve radical equations. And the first one up is going to be fairly straightforward. How do you solve a problem if there's a single root in it, a single radical? Square root, cube root, could be fourth root, any of those, it doesn't matter. What we're looking for is how do we get the x all by itself. So the first thing we need to do is get the radical isolated on one side. So 3x minus 1, let's move the 2 to the other side. All right. So if you have the radical all by itself, let's cancel out the root. In this case, we're going to cube. And if we do it to one side, we've got to do it to the other side. So we're going to be left with 3x minus 1 on the left. We're going to be left with 8 on the right. If we add 1, we'll get 3x equals 9. x equals 3. That's your answer. We can go ahead and check it. The cube root of 3 times 3 minus 1 minus 2. The cube root of 9 minus 1 minus 2. The cube root of 8 minus 2. The cube root of 8 is 2. Is 2 minus 2 0? It is. Story checks out. All right, similar steps. Problem 11. Give it a shot. What do we do if we have a similar radical problem, but it's not just a single term on the other side. It's multiple terms, polynomial on the right side here. We're going to do the exact same thing. We've got our radical isolated. So to cancel out the square root, we're going to square. But to, if we do it to the left, we've got to do it on the right. And I'm writing the right side in parentheses because we need to square the entire right side, which means foiling. Careful there. Don't lose any solutions. Negative x squared is x squared. We do the O and the I of foiling. We get minus 2x. And 1 times 1 squared, uh, 1 times 1 is a 1. Let's move everything over. Minus an x, minus a 1. We've got 0 is x squared, minus 3x. And in this problem, that does us a favor, makes things a little easier. We can factor out an x. Don't have to do any factoring. Uh, that involves the quadratic. Let's pull an x out. x equals 0 or 3. All right, we can plug this in to check this. Square root of 0 plus 1, does that equal negative 0 plus 1? The square root of 1 does equal 1, so that checks out. How about the square root of 3 plus 1? Does that equal negative 3 plus 1? This is the square root of 4. This is negative 2. At first glance, this may not seem like it works, but what's the square root of 4? Plus or minus 2. So one of those is a negative, and that sure is negative 2. So this does work out. All right, so and we would box our answer again. 0 and 3 would be our solutions. Problem 23, you're up. All right, what happens if we have two radicals to deal with? So what we're going to do, we need, still need to isolate our radicals here. We're going to have to square twice to get rid of both of the square roots. So let's isolate the more complicated radical. So we'll get 5x minus 1 on the right side. Bring the other radical over. Let's square both sides. So we'll have 5x minus 1 on the left. Now we're going to have to FOIL here, and that's going to leave some radicals for us. So 1 plus 2 root x plus x on the right. All right. So we've squared once. We've gotten rid of one of the radicals. This one's gone. We still have one more to deal with. Let's get that isolated, move everything else over. 4x minus 2 equals 2 root x. And we could actually make this simpler by dividing by 2. And now let's square both sides. So we've got 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals x, bring the x over, 4x squared minus 5x min uh, plus 1, 
And at this point, unfortunately, this doesn't factor cleanly, so we need to do the quadratic. 5 plus or minus 5 squared is 25, minus 4a, c, all over 2a. We'll have 5 plus or minus, this is 25 minus 16, which is 9, all over 8. 5 plus or minus 3 over 8, so we've got 8 over 8, or 2 over 8, which is 1 or 1 fourth. And we can plug those back in and they will work. All right, go ahead and try problem 31. Okay, second objective. We're going to solve quad, uh, equations that are quadratic in form. First one, we're going to take a look at an a squared minus 3a plus 2 problem. And so on this problem, this should look familiar except for the x minus 2's are a little more complicated than we're used to looking at. So, instead of dealing with the x minus 2's, we're going to just substitute and use a's until we can get solutions. Let's factor this. What multiplies to 2 and adds to negative 3? Negative 2 and negative 1. So a equals 2, or a equals 1. Let's substitute back in. What does a equal? a is x minus 2. So x minus 2 equals 2, or 1. We'll add 2 to both sides, and we'll get 4 or 3. 3 or 4 is your solution. Alright, so that's the first type of quadratic equation we're going to deal with here. The second one is what do we do if instead of an x squared and an x and a constant problem, we have instead x and square root of x. We're going to solve this just like we normally do with our a, b, and c. a is 1, b is negative 5, c is 6. Solve this with the quadratic, but instead of it being x equals negative b, it's the square root of x equals negative b. So, negative b, plus or minus, square root, b squared is 25, minus 4, a, c, all over 2a. So the square root of x is 5, plus or minus, square root of 1 over 2 which is 6 over 2 or 4 over 2. So the square root of x is 3 or 2. Not quite done. We need to finish this. We need to square. So we solve for x, and we get 9 or 4. All right, 51 is the last one for you to try. Give that a shot. Any questions, we'll go over them in class. Good luck.